Hello everybody and welcome to the webinar. My name's John Tracy and I'll be your host for this webinar. We're going to take a few minutes, we're going to let those people that uh, haven't been able to join yet just give them a few minutes to get joined, get the client installed if they need to install anything on their PC uh, so they don't miss the beginning of the webinar. So in the next couple of minutes let me tell you about a great new feature that we've implemented recently in the Starleaf Cloud. and We call it Click to Call. Now, Click to Call is our implementation of WebRTC. WebRTC is a standard where you can join a video conference call using nothing more than a web browser with your, your camera and your, and your PC. You don't need to install anything. It's a great way to, to join meetings. And a lot of companies have implemented it for just that. They use it to allow you to join multi-party meetings. And you can do exactly that with the Starleaf Cloud. However, we've taken it a little bit further. With click to call you can actually do some other things that you might find really useful. So let me give you a couple of examples. The first thing we call is click to call me. What is click to call me? Well click to call me is a banner that you put in your email signature and it just has a button that says click to call me. So the user receives your email and thinks actually I'd like to talk to you about that. Clicks the button, it launches the web browser, it connects directly to the Starleaf cloud and it places a call directly to you. No multi-party meetings needed, no virtual meeting rooms, it's just a direct point-to-point -point call from the person that's received your email directly to you. And it's simple, they don't have to install anything, they don't have to configure anything, it's just simple browser-based calling. But let's take that idea one step further. Imagine you send out a marketing email to a lot of prospects. In that, you can actually have a call to action and a button that says, call me now. The user clicks on that button, but instead of it placing a call to a single person, what it actually does is places a call to a hunt group. Now what's a hunt group, you ask? Well, a hunt group is something that we do in the Starleaf Cloud that is very similar to how hunt groups work for telephony. In telephony, you place a call to a call center and it rings a number of different phones, and the first agent that's available takes that call. Well, that's exactly how it works with video. With the Starleaf Cloud and a hunt group, you can actually have a click to call banner that dials a hunt group. So you could have all of your inside sales reps sitting there waiting for people to call in. Somebody clicks that button, it launches the video call and the first available agent, the call gets routed directly to them. So this is just some, one of the new features that we've been, uh, we've been adding to the Starleaf Cloud in, in recent releases. And I thought I'd take a couple of minutes just to tell you about it. It now looks like just about everybody's joined, everybody's online, so we'll get going. So welcome everybody to today's webinar. Today's webinar is about migrating existing video systems to the cloud. It's about taking what you already have, not buying new endpoints, but connecting the ones that you already have in your conference rooms to the cloud, and about the benefits that you'll receive from doing that. So the first question always is, why would you want to do this? Why would you want to take your existing endpoints and connect them to the cloud? That's a very good question. Well, a lot of people think of connecting to the cloud as a way of doing multi-party meetings. There are many services out there that claim to be cloud-based services that do nothing more than multi-party meetings. But really, you need to focus on a lot more than multi-party meetings to be a true cloud provider. If you focus on the big calls, really you're missing out on the true nature of calling. The true nature of calling is point to point. It's the ability for me to call you. I don't want to have to go through a virtual meeting room or some piece of infrastructure just to place a point to point call. If I need to talk to you now, I want to talk to you now. I don't want to schedule some time in the future. I just want to be able to dial you, just like I can and I've always have been able to do with a tele telephone network. The infrastructure market is shrinking. And infrastructure was the way that a lot of companies got into video and they realized they had to make a very, very large investment in some quite expensive hardware just to be able to do simple things like host meetings or to be able to call through their firewall to the outside world. But really what we're starting to see is the cloud vendors are starting to become dominant. We're starting to see venture capital firms Building into their agreement to loan you money is that you will not spend it on on-premise infrastructure. Think about it, a few years ago, if you were starting a company, you'd need to go out and buy an email server, maybe Microsoft Exchange, you'd need to go out and buy a file server, you'd probably need to go out and buy a PBX and, and some telephones on the desks, and a number of different pieces of infrastructure before you could actually get up and running. 
Nowadays, VCs are guiding their customers to say, um, don't waste your money on this. Go spend your money on developing the product that's actually going to build your company and use the cloud services to deliver these kind of services for you. So you don't need to spend a large amount of money day one on, on infrastructure. Just connect your devices directly to the cloud and get on and do what you do well. Okay, let me give you some stats from our cloud. I said earlier about if you just focus on the multi-party, you're gonna be missing out on a large proportion of the calling. Well, these stats are taken from our cloud since 2013, and we're processing many, many millions of minutes of calls every single week. So we have a very, very large data set with which to be able to say 65% of all calls are point to point. So if you're just focusing on the multi-party meetings, you're only looking at 35% of all the calling that's going on within a business. So if your service only provides multi-party meetings to you, you might not be using your video estate to its full potential. Another thing we find out from the, the data from the cloud is the average size of a multi-party meeting is only five participants. Now sure, there are some big calls and there are a lot of small calls, but when we average it out across all those millions of minutes every single week, we find out there's only five participants in a call. When I say participants, I mean sites. So there might be more than five people, but generally the average is five sites. So again, if you're looking at a multi-party meeting service and they're wowing you with numbers of you can do a 100-way calling or 50-way calling or whatever it is, Think about the average. Think about what as an organization you're actually going to use. You might find you're paying for something that you don't use. Okay, let's talk about video calling. Video calling is, is pervasive nowadays. It's everywhere. Every single chat application you can download from the App Store seems to have video support built in these days. It all started back with the original legacy Skype application, but we're starting to see applications like Atlassian's HipChat, um, some new entrance uh, applications like FAM that actually work within the iMessage framework and deliver multi-party video through Google Hangouts, um, and even applications like WhatsApp. WhatsApp and all of these others all do video. They all do multi-party video, and they do multi-party video for free. However, there's one major flaw. None of these support room-based conference systems. Now, you might say, well, why do I need a room-based conference system? Well, the reality is, when you get more than a few people together, you really want them to sit in a room together. That's where the collaboration happens. We've all seen meetings where everybody's joining from a small webcam and sitting in their own little window, and they've usually got the system on mute, and they're doing their email, and they're not really paying attention. So collaboration is about bringing people together, but bringing groups of people together over video, and that's best done with a room-based video system. Some people say, well, I'll put a PC in the conference room and I'll connect a USB camera and a USB microphone and we'll use that and we'll run the application that, that doesn't support room-based systems. And for some companies that does work out. But the reality is for mission-critical video, for something that you're going to use every single day of the week, the PC is not the right answer to this. We've all seen uh, situations where PCs we've been using suddenly decide that they're going to install that critical Windows update that we've been putting off for a couple of months. Do you really want that happening just before your board meeting's about to start, where Windows makes the decision that you've put this off for too long, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install this. So by using an appliance in your conference room, you're going to get a much better experience. It's going to be there when you need it. It only does one thing and it does that one thing very, very well. So all of these new applications that don't support video are becoming a problem because people are using them. Now, normally I would, I would ask, the live audience, um, and it's a little difficult because I can't see your hands, but how many of you use WhatsApp? My suspicion is quite a lot of you. And quite a lot of you not only use WhatsApp in your personal life, but also use it as a business communications tool. But put yourself in the seat of the IT manager. The IT manager who knows this is going on gets a bit worried because he has no control over this. He has no idea who is sending company confidential information out over WhatsApp to others outside of his business. He has no ability to turn off people's membership of groups when they leave the company. So it could be that somebody who's been fired from the company is still in a conversation group where confidential information about the company is being shared. So you've got to ask yourself, why do people do this? Why do people use these apps that their company hasn't authorized, knowing that it's against the company's policies? Well, the answer is because they're easy to use. 
and they're sometimes better than the tools being provided by the company. Keep that in mind, we'll come back to that. So what can you do? You've got an existing estate of video conferencing equipment. You've got a lot of users who use it every single day. They know how to use it. Well, people always say, you've got to make a choice. You've either got to go cloud or you've got to go on-premise. Well, the reality is you don't. You can do a hybrid. Now, obviously, as a cloud provider, we don't recommend this, but it does work. So maybe you've got an MCU. Maybe you want to keep your multi-party calling in-house. So you might have a, a coding MCU or, or one from another vendor that you it works, you know how to use it, it's in your data center, but you want the cloud to take care of all of the registration of the endpoints, all of the directories, all of the security, all of the, all of the other features, but you just want to take care of the multi-party meetings yourself. And this is a perfectly acceptable way to do it. We call this hybrid cloud. It's a hybrid between your on-premise infrastructure and your cloud-based service. Okay, let's talk about bridging solutions for a moment. What is a bridging solution? Well, a bridging solution is taking that multi-party conferencing that I just mentioned and maybe using a cloud-based service. There are plenty of them out there. A lot of companies are doing this, and they're all pretty much the same. They all deliver roughly the same kind of service. But as I said earlier, only 35% of your video traffic is going to be multi-party. What about the other 65%? What about the ability to just call from one person to another? A bridging solution doesn't solve that. Well, actually, they claim they do solve it, but the way they solve it is you send an invite to somebody that says, please meet in my virtual meeting room, and you dial into the virtual meeting room, and they dial into the virtual meeting room, and you use a multi-party conferencing resource to do a point-to-point -point call. Sounds crazy. Imagine if that worked for audio. Imagine if the only way I could call to an Android phone from my iPhone would be to send you an Outlook invite that says, at 2 o'clock, can we please have a phone call? We'd, we'd have stopped using telephony years ago if that was the way it happened. So really, if you're looking at a cloud-based service to connect your room-based video systems to, you need to look at one that solves all of these pieces for you, solves the multi-party piece, solves the, the directory across multiple endpoint types, but also delivers new functionality and delivers point-to-point -point calling. Because point-to-point -point calling is going to be, on average, about 65% of the calls that you make. Okay. One thing that this industry is very, very good at is telling users, your old endpoints are, are too old, now you've got to rip and replace. You've got to throw them away. And I always say, well, first of all, why are you looking for, why are you considering a new endpoint? Do you need new features? Do you need maybe interoperability with a platform like Skype for Business? Do you need functionality like click to call, the ability to dial into a meeting room from a web browser? And maybe you've got some old infrastructure that really just doesn't cut it in this day and age. Maybe it's failing or it's outdated or you're paying a lot of money in maintenance for something that is only used for a small portion of the time. Well, you don't need to rip and replace. And the reality is the cost of the endpoints now is no longer the cost of upgrading. Think of something called the colleague cost. Now, what's the colleague cost? The colleague cost is how much does it cost you to train your entire organization to use a new tool? Now, maybe you're replacing an endpoint from the same vendor. So you're taking out an old endpoint from vendor A and you're replacing it with a new endpoint from vendor A. Well, the likelihood is they're going to have a new remote control. The likelihood is they're going to have a new on-screen user interface. So you have to train all of those users how to use this new system. Now, it might not be formal training, but it just might be a loss in productivity. When people come into the conference room and they have that moment where they go, what is this? I don't know how to use this. And they spend 10 minutes figuring out how all the menus work and how to place the call that they knew how to do on the old system day in and day out. So whenever you're thinking about upgrading to something new, you're thinking about ripping and replacing, think about what it's going to cost your organization in colleague cost to put that new equipment in there. And if you're only putting that new equipment in there because you need a specific new feature, maybe you should be thinking about a cloud service because it's possible that the cloud service can deliver that new feature without you having to change your endpoint. Okay, what about systems where you've got multiple vendors within one organization? So maybe you've got you know, some Polycom in one office, you've got some Cisco in another office, maybe you've got some life sizes in another office, and you've got a smattering of RadVision or via endpoints around the place as well. How do you bring them all together in one organization? How do you get one consistent address book that runs across all of these? How do you synchronize these so that when I go into my address book on my Polycom, I can see all of my room systems, whether they be Cisco, whether they be LifeSize, whether they be RadVision or Avaya? So 
A cloud service can deliver this. It can deliver this multi-vendor environment where every single endpoint can call every single other endpoint, they can share address books, and it can all be managed through one central point. So let's talk about some of the vendors. Let's talk about um, how certain vendors and, and how they work with the Starleaf Cloud. So we'll start with Polycom. Polycom probably have one of the biggest deployed estates out there. Um, they've been around for a number of years, and they actually make some really, really good quality endpoints. And in fact, on the audio side, they actually are probably the industry leader. Polycom Audio is, has always been superb, and they really do, combined with some high quality endpoints, make a very, very good experience. But as I said, it may be that the endpoint you've got works perfectly. It may be that your customers and your, your, your uh, people in your organization are very, very familiar with that endpoint. But there's new functionality you need. Maybe you're looking for uh, interoperability with Skype for Business. Maybe you're looking for the ability to, to join multi-party meetings that have lots of different endpoint types in them. Maybe you're looking for a way to get a directory onto those endpoints without having to spend a lot of money on on-premise infrastructure. Well, Starleaf Cloud can deliver that. In fact, very recently we put out a video on YouTube that shows how to connect the Polycom Group series to the Starleaf Cloud and, and the features that it brings to that endpoint. Uh, if you'd like to see it, just do a search on YouTube for Starleaf and Polycom. I'm sure you'll find it. Okay, what about Cisco? Well, Cisco really have sort of made it very clear. The future is Spark. Spark is Cisco's own cloud platform, very similar to, to the Starleaf Cloud. Um, it's, it's still growing, they're still uh, adding new features to it, but you can see through their purchase of a company called Akano that they're really looking to staff up the engineering for that cloud platform. And you know, this is my opinion um, for what it's worth, but it looks like the on-premise infrastructure that Cisco has delivered to do video over the last couple of years may be coming to an end. That may not be for a few years yet, but really you can see the direction is Spark, the direction is cloud from Cisco. Now that means that to use Cisco Spark, you've got to have the very latest generation of Cisco endpoints. So if you've got older ones, uh, maybe you've got go endpoints going back to the sort of Tamburg acquisition days of, of the mid 2000s, um, these are perfectly good endpoints. Your, your people in your organization might be completely comfortable using them, but if you're gonna to move to Spark, you have to throw them all away. You have to go and get the very latest generation of endpoints. Well, ironically, uh, Starleaf actually supports more Cisco endpoints on its cloud than Cisco do on Spark. So all of those old Tamburg systems, all of the old uh, the Cisco systems over the last few years, all are fully compatible with the Starleaf cloud. Um, we actually produce a document that we put on our support site that is a list of supported endpoints. Go take a look at that and you'll see all the endpoints that we support. Okay, what about LifeSize? Well, LifeSize has its own cloud platform. But again, like Cisco, they're trying to convince you to buy the very latest generation of endpoints. Starleaf supports life-size endpoints all the way back to the original life-size room system. So again, you need to check the software revisions on them to make sure they're at a certain level. Again, that can be found in the, in the supported endpoint document that's on our support site. But take a look at that and you'll see that we support all of the, uh, all of the life-size endpoints on the Starleaf cloud. And this allows us to deliver extra features to those endpoints. So imagine if you've got a life-size passport, and this is a pretty old, uh, relatively low-cost endpoint that LifeSize produced a few years ago. It is not compatible with the life-size cloud, but connect that endpoint to the Starleaf cloud and you inherit all of the features and functionality of the cloud. You'll get a directory from the cloud, you'll get all of the security provided by the cloud, the ability to join multi-party meetings directly from the, from the passport endpoint itself, but you'll also get interoperability with all of the other systems out there including Skype for Business. And this is something that the, the cloud really delivers to all of these endpoints. You do not need to change your endpoint just to, be get, to get interoperability with Skype for Business. So what about the new players, someone like Yealink? Well, Yealink and Starleaf have entered into a partnership where Yealink endpoints are now fully compatible and certified on the Starleaf cloud. But we've gone one step further. We've actually made it really simple to configure your Yealink endpoint to the Starleaf cloud using something we call the Quick Connect protocol. Quick Connect allows you to take your endpoint, take it out of the box, plug it all in, set it all up. Then all you have to do to connect it to the cloud is go, log into the cloud portal, create a new entry, give the system a name, and the portal will give you a 12-digit number. You then go across to your Yealink endpoint, you type in that 12-digit number, and bingo, you're connected to the cloud and all of the features of the cloud at your, your disposal. 
We plan to do a lot more further integration, so stay tuned over the next couple of months for more information on Yaling. Huawei is another new entrant into this market. Huawei have just launched their new TE10 endpoint, which is a very, very nice, compact, uh, very low cost endpoint, but really, really great and simple to use. Couple that with the Starleaf Cloud, and all of a sudden, all of that extra functionality becomes available. And I know I keep saying it, but Skype for Business interoperability. The TE10 natively doesn't support Skype for Business. Connect it to the Starleaf Cloud, and all of a sudden, you're making Skype for Business calls. And there are many, many other vendors out there. Sony, Avaya, Radvision, even some of the old Aether endpoints. Um, check our supported endpoint list, and you'll see that if we support those endpoints, make sure they're on the right software revision, and all of a sudden, all of the features of the cloud become available to them. So just remember, you don't have to rip and replace. You don't have to throw away those old endpoints. Think about the colleague cost. Throwing away and buying a new endpoint that seems cheap might cost you a lot of money in the long run. Okay, how can you do this? Well, simply go to starleaf.com. Up at the top of the screen there, you'll see a, a register for free. You can register for an account. It'll give you two options. It'll give you a personal account where you can download our soft client and you can go and make video calls. But register for a team account. Register for an account for your company and all of a sudden we will create you an organization in the cloud. We'll make you the administrator of it and you can then give out accounts to other people in your company. So you can start to build a network of, of users and devices. We'll actually give you a 30-day trial to be able to register your hardware room systems. We'll give you a 30-day trial of our multi-party conferencing service as well. If you decide that you, you don't want to go forward with these, absolutely no problem. You can continue to use our software clients. You can continue to make video calls for free forever. So don't take our word for it. Go try it out. See how it works for you. Register for a free account and then start making video calls. Register some of your room systems to the cloud and see how just taking your old endpoints connecting them to the cloud can deliver you all of this extra functionality. Okay. We've had a lot of questions come in today, and our marketing team have done an absolutely stellar job of answering as many of them as they can. Um, they've actually kept three for me to answer. Um, I don't know whether they're, uh, they didn't, weren't able to answer them or they just want to, to make me work for a living. So um, we'll take the first questions. I honestly don't know what's coming up, but uh, the first question is from Dieter in Munich. Munich. Munich's a lovely city. If you've never been, I'd highly recommend it. Um, he says, I have a life-size Room 200 and a Team 200. Can I really use these to make Skype for business calls? Absolutely, Dieter. Take those endpoints, register them, register them to the cloud, and then all you'll need to do is federate your Skype for business environment with the Starleaf cloud. Once you've done that, you can make point-to-point -point calls between your life-size systems and your Skype for business systems as if they were, you were making any other video call. It's really that simple. Um, one of the things that I would say if, you, if you're, if you're going to do this, go register for uh, a free trial, connect them, try it out. What have you got to lose? Okay, next question is from Peter in Gothenburg. Um, what am I missing by using a conferencing provider like BlueJeans? Um, well, I think you've kind of answered your own question there, Peter. They are just that. They are just a conferencing provider. They do multi-party conferencing. They don't actually take care of any of the other features. If you want interop, you have to join a multi-party meeting. But they don't actually help you get your call from your conference room to their conferencing platform. So it might be that you, know, you have to open holes in your firewall and set up some way for the, the traffic to get securely in and out. The Starleaf Cloud takes care of all of this for you. So Conferencing providers like BlueJeans and Zoom and others, they really are just that. They are just a conferencing provider. They don't take care of any of the rest of it for you. Okay, we've got time for one more, and this is from Jason in Cork, Ireland. Um, can I join Skype for Business meetings hosted on the AVMCU from my Cisco room systems? Jason, perfect timing. So as part of our latest cloud rollout, we're going to be um, enabling you, the, giving you the ability to join calls hosted on the AVMCU. Now, the AVMCU is Microsoft's own MCU that's built into the Skype for Business platform. And this is normally people would join meetings by going into Outlook and clicking the Skype meeting button, and everyone would just click a link and you would join the call on the AVMCU. 
up until now, there's been no way for people using room-based systems. And when I say room-based systems, I mean from the traditional manufacturers or Polycom, Cisco, LifeSize, uh, and all the others to be able to connect onto the AVMCU. You need a Microsoft approved system like an SRS um, or something like the Logitech Smart Dock to be able to do that. Well, with the next rollout of our cloud software, you'll be able to join directly from your Cisco or any other manufacturer's room system directly to the AVMCU. And it will give you the ability to join as a full participant in that meeting. So you won't get some limited environment. You'll actually see your entire screen fill up with all the different participants in the call. Okay, that's really all we have time for today. Um, I hope you found this useful. Um, I hope we've been able to answer your questions. If we haven't got to your question, my apologies. What we'll actually do is we'll get our marketing people to, uh, to reach out to you in the next day or so and make sure that your questions get answered. But I say, I hope you found this useful. I hope you'll come back for the next webinar in a couple of weeks. And uh, I'll see you all then. Thanks very much.